You never get a second chance to make a first impression and when applying for jobs, your resume is that first impression that you make and as the job market continues to tighten and more and more people are competing for the same roles, what you choose to include within your resume is arguably more important than it's ever been before. But with that, the things that you choose to omit from your resume can also sometimes be equally as important. And in my experience, there tend to be a few things that real estate analysts and associate candidates often include within their application materials that tend to hurt their chances of landing an interview more than they actually help. So to make sure that this is not going to be the case for you and you're not unintentionally shooting yourself in the foot by adding the wrong things to your applications, in this video, I wanna cover four things that do not belong on a real estate resume and what to add in place of each of these items to help you land more interviews and ultimately more offers. So the first thing I recommend removing from your resume that is especially applicable to the real estate industry specifically is the phrase proficient in Microsoft Office or proficient in Microsoft Excel. If I'm reading this as a hiring manager, the word proficient tells me pretty much nothing about your actual knowledge of the software. And if this is all you have on your resume about your Excel skills, I'm going to assume that you don't really have many skills at all. Wording like this is really just filler content that usually comes up when people don't have any notable Excel skills to speak of. So to make sure that's not going to be the default assumption when someone's reading your resume, I'd recommend avoiding this type of language altogether and instead replacing this with the specific and applicable Excel skills that you have that are directly related to real estate and ideally using keywords that are also going to be included directly within a job description. For real estate analyst roles, this would include specific Excel skills that show your ability to tackle the responsibilities of the job you're applying for, including things like real estate equity waterfall modeling, acquisition and development pro forma modeling, running a DCF analysis, or anything else that's specifically related to real estate that you'd clearly be using Excel for. If at all possible, I would also recommend trying to prove out your Excel skills within your experience bullet points directly by adding details on complex projects you may have completed in Excel, models or dashboards you may have created in Excel, or anything else you've accomplished on the job that directly shows your Excel skills in practice. The goal here is to actually showcase your abilities in a tangible and believable way, and in general, the more specific you can get with these descriptions descriptions, the more clear and compelling your Excel skills are going to be. Now, in addition to removing proficient in Microsoft Excel from your resume, the next thing you'll want to remove when applying for analyst or associate roles is any generic buzzwords you've included, especially when describing the soft skills that you have. Similar to the word proficient, terms like leader, hardworking, or goal-oriented essentially mean nothing to a hiring manager, and in most cases, these terms also make it seem like you're just trying to fill space due to a lack of real accomplishments to add to your resume. So instead of just saying that you're a leader, a better way to incorporate this is to show how you've been able to lead a team in practice, whether that's by talking through a leadership role you held within a team project at work, or mentioning a leadership position you held within a community or academic organization and describing the responsibilities you had within each role. And instead of saying something like you're goal oriented, a better way to incorporate this would be to describe how you were able to meet or exceed aggressive targets at work or at school, ideally in a way that surpassed previous benchmarks or even records and the specific actions you took to make those things happen. And one of the most important things to keep in mind here when describing these actions is that in almost all cases, you wanna make sure to mention what your efforts actually led to and add measurable results whenever possible to provide context to the reader around what you actually did and the impact your actions had. Saying that you were responsible for managing a team isn't a bad start, but what's even more impactful on a resume is the ability to quantify those responsibilities and ideally your accomplishments within that management role, talking through things like how many people you managed, any revenue increases or expense reductions you were responsible for, or any other notable outcomes that you drove to help move the company forward. 
There's a saying that goes something along the lines of, show me, don't tell me, and this is especially true in a resume context, and the goal here is not to just describe the skills and personality traits that you have, but to actually show how you demonstrated these things throughout your professional or academic career, and how these things relate to the specific role you're trying to land. Now, the next thing you'll want to make sure to remove from your resume before submitting applications for real estate analyst and associate roles are any grammatical and formatting errors, even those that might feel insignificant. Capitalizing words that shouldn't be capitalized, using commas or periods inconsistently, or even using different types of formatting throughout your resume can all raise an immediate red flag for hiring managers, especially when you're applying for analytical roles. These positions require an incredible amount of attention to detail when doing things like building out formulas within a complex Excel model, putting together investment memos for clients or equity partners, and ultimately coming up with calculations that might be impacting eight and nine figure transactions. So showing that you care about accuracy upfront is an absolute necessity that many people overlook. Make sure your use of periods is the same throughout your entire resume. Make sure your spacing in the document is consistent and correct. And if nothing else, at least get a friend to proofread your resume to make sure that spelling errors haven't fallen through the cracks. Think of your resume itself as a direct work sample that's intended to represent the level of care and thought that you'd put into the position if you were hired. And if you don't take the time and effort to put something together that's clean, clear, and accurate, up front, this will not help your chances of being brought in for an interview. And then finally, in addition to the things we've already mentioned, the final point I'd recommend removing from your resume before applying for jobs is your GPA, specifically in cases where this is under about 3.7 or if you've been out of school and working full time for more than about three years. If a company wants to know your GPA, they'll ask for this directly, but if this number isn't overly impressive, there's no need to volunteer this information unless specifically requested. For people that intentionally chose a difficult major, worked throughout school to help pay for tuition, or took a demanding course load to graduate early, GPA isn't going to be necessarily indicative of intelligence or even work ethic in many cases, and if this isn't a number that you want to show off and it's not explicitly being asked for, there's no need to add this within your resume at all. Also, if you're including this on your resume with about three or more years of work experience under your belt, this can also sometimes look like you're trying to rest on your laurels or trying to draw attention away from relatively few work-related accomplishments. So if you've been out of college for a while, even if your GPA was above that 3.7 cutoff, I'd still recommend removing this to keep the focus on your career. Ultimately, you are the one responsible for shaping the narrative of your resume, and the goal is to keep this clear and concise with measurable successes included in a way that makes you stand out from other applicants and in a way that makes an employer believe that you can add value within the organization from day one if you were hired. And if you want more help with tightening up your resume or you want to build the technical skills you'll need to have on that resume in order to land interviews and ultimately land jobs at top real estate investment development or brokerage firms as always make sure to check out our all-in-one membership training platform breaking a cre academy a membership to the academy will give you instant access to over 120 hours of video training on real estate financial modeling and analysis. You'll get access to hundreds of practice Excel interview exam questions, sample acquisition case studies, and you'll also get access to the break into CRE analyst certification exam, which covers topics like real estate pro forma and development modeling, commercial real estate lease modeling, equity waterfall modeling, and many other real estate financial analysis concepts that will help you prove to employers that you have what it takes to tackle the responsibilities of an analyst or associate at a top real estate firm. And if you like this video and want to see more content on this channel on real estate resume tips, make sure to hit the like button and let me know. And let me know in the comments any other resume or job search related topics that you'd like to see covered in a future video on the channel. As always, thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you found this helpful. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to see more videos like this every single week. And I'll see you in the next video.